morning to all. I am Dr. Vihima Vishwara, Assistant Professor of Physics, Department of Freshman Engineering, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering, Dundigal, Hyderabad. Welcome to the lecture series, Atomic and Molecular Spectroscopy. Today we are going to discuss Vector Atom Model, Space Quantization. The content of this presentation or introduction, Space Quantization, Orientation of the Orbit, Allowed Orientations and Orbital Magnetic Moment and finally, References. Introduction. Vector Atom Model is an extension of Bohr-Sommerfeld Atom Model. Uh, due to the limitations of Bohr's Atom Model and uh, Sommerfeld Atom Model, uh, this vector model introduced by inventions, uh, ideas of several scientists such as Bohr, Sommerfeld, uh, Ollenbeck, Goldsmith, uh, and again uh, uh, several scientists. So it was uh, intended to overcome the limitations uh, already proposed by Bohr's and Sommerfeld model. While it also attempted to explain the new body of experimental observations such as Gemon effect, anomalous Gemon effect, and passion back effect, Stark effects, etc. So all these are uh, attempted to explain by uh, this vector atom model. So this model incorporated new concepts partly by analogy and some other uh, concepts by taking empirical methods. So the two central features of this vector atom model are by considering space quantization of the electron orbits and the electron spin. These two are very very important for the central idea of vector atom model. So vector atom model try to explain uh, several experimental observations uh, such as anomalous Gemon effect, Stark effect, passion back effect. So all these are in order to evaluate the structure of atom. Okay, so all these things happen in the uh, 20th century, around 1915 or 1916 years. So in this lecture particularly we see about the space quantization of the electron orbits. Space quantization. In Bohr's model, atomic model, particularly, electron is assumed to revolve around the circular orbit, around the nucleus. So, whenever electron is revolving around the uh, circular orbit, we need it to, we need only one coordinate to explain about the motion of the electron. So whenever we consider the Bose atom model as the electron is considered to be uh, revolving around the circular orbit, it requires only one uh, degree of freedom as it is, uh, as it requires only one coordinate. So that means we can say uh, it is a Bose model has only one degree of freedom. So one one quantum number, namely uh, principal quantum number, n is enough to describe the motion of electron in the case of Bose atomic model. But when we consider Sommerfeld theory, according to Sommerfeld theory, electron uh, revolves around uh, around a circular uh, elliptical orbits, as in the case of Bohr's atom model, electrons revolve in a, a particular certain uh, circular orbit, but in the case of Sommerfeld model, there are also certain elliptical orbits. Shape uh, That means the shape of the orbit can change from circular shape. So in this case, to describe the motion of electron, we need uh, two coordinates. So the orbit is quantized regarding the size and shape. So that means magnitude of the orbit is required. Uh, magnitude means size, size of the shape, uh, that particular orbit. So that is one uh, one coordinate for that uh, size and shape. Shape also here not uh, as uh, like circular, but here 
as it is a elliptical orbit so uh, it is also important uh, for shape also so here to describe the motion of electron we need two coordinates that that's why we, we uh, this model particularly possesses two degrees of freedom hence two quantum numbers namely principal quantum number n and azimuthal quantum number n5 are required to explain the motion of electron uh, according to the sommerfeld theory description of the electron motion in terms of these two quantum numbers implies that the electron motion is confined to a single plane so according to sommerfeld theory as the electron is moving in uh, elliptical orbit uh, uh, it is moving in a uh, single plane that means the uh, plane of uh, orbit plane of the uh, orbit Measure axis, uh, orbit of measure axis, uh, measure axis. So, but uh, when we see the entity of atom, it is a three dimension, uh, dimensional entity. So, orbital plane of electron may take different orientations in the atom. We cannot consider as the electron is moving only in certain uh, orientation. Uh, according to Sommerfeld, so we can consider uh, classically speaking, the electron orbit may orient in all possible uh, directions in space, as shown in this diagram. So here, uh, B B is the magnetic field direction. We will say about the magnetic field in the later slide. So maybe it is in the Z direction. So here. Uh, if it is the position of nucleus, electron direction can be in any orientation, electron orbital uh, orientation. Electron may not uh, uh, orient only in single uh, direction, but it can be having several uh, directions per orientation of the orbit. So, according to Sommerfeld, out of these uh, possible infinite directions, only certain discrete orientations are allowed for the electron orbits. In general, we may assume that the electron can take uh, any uh, direction of orientation of the orbit, but according to Sommerfeld, uh, he proposed that these uh, orientations also only in certain discrete uh, directions only. So, uh, here we will see. So, to represent these directions, we also need some certain uh, reference or, uh, reference direction. So, the orientation of the orbit can be identified with the help of orbital angular momentum PL, momentum vector PL. So, the, uh, which is directed along the axis of rotation of the electron and is perpendicular to the plane of the orbit. So, whenever uh, the electron is revolving around this particular orbit, so this is the velocity radial vector, so the uh, momentum vector, angular orbital angular momentum vector is in the direction perpendicular to the uh, plane of orbit. So here PL is the uh, uh, orbital angular momentum vector which is perpendicular to the uh, plane of orbit as shown in this diagram. In general, electron, we can assume that electron, if it is the nucleus, electron can orient, uh, can take a, a revolution around a particular orbit, so this orbit can be orient in any direction like this, maybe the electron orbit can be like this, that means electron is revolving around this orbit in this particular uh, direction, maybe like this or like this. So the electron orbital can be in any direction. So, these directions are also, according to Sommerfeld, 
should be in certain orientations are only allowed so to represent these directions we also need some reference direction to represent all these uh, directions or orientations of orbits there could be several orientations of orbits for electron so all these orientations of the orbits can be identified by taking a reference direction which is along the z direction maybe you can consider a magnetic field acting along the z direction so if the magnetic field is along the z direction here uh, the angular momentum vector pl is also in the magnetic field direction z so by taking the uh, orbital angular momentum vector pl we can represent the orient, uh, orientation of the orbit particular orbit in which the electron is revolving around the orbit so here according to sommerfeld the vector pl can orient itself only in certain discrete directions related to the external magnetic field direction in general as per the uh, sommerfeld theory the magnetic field applied uh, should be very less and maybe tends to zero so uh, that means it should not affect the uh, motion of electron so this is uh, known as this orientation particular orientation in particular uh, external magnetic field direction is known as quantization of, of direction or space quantization so electron can take only uh, orbits of in certain uh, orientations maybe like this so here this could be one direction of Uh, orbital orientation this is the other like this there, are, there could be certain limited number of orientations for orbit of electron so thus in the vector at a model the orbits are quantized in magnitude shape and direction in the case of bohr set a model orbits are quantized as regarding the magnitude only that means only one uh, coordinate is enough to describe the motion of electron but in the you know, that means one of 1 degree of freedom but in the case of sommer field two coordinates are required because uh, the orbital is quantized as regarding the size and shape also as the shape is uh, changing from circular to elliptical orbit so Uh, two coordinates are required so the degree of freedom is 2 in the case of sommer field model but in the case of vector model to describe more uh, precisely we need three degrees of freedom as the atom is in the uh, entity of three dimension so here as per the vector atom model uh, orbit orbits are quantized in magnitude and shape and the direction of orientation of the orbit also at only shape so direction of orientation of orbit is also required to describe the motion of electron so the space quantization of electron orbit is specified by the projection of its orbital angular momentum and to the reference direction so to represent the direction of orientation of electron orbits we need some certain uh, reference direction for that we are taking mag assuming magnetic field in the presence of electron orbits so such projections being themselves quantized all these projections are uh, can be said as quantized as shown in this diagram so we we'll see what is uh, this angular momentum for this particular direction the later slides so here in this here itself we can describe so in vector atom model the orbital angular momentum of the electron is given by pl equal to 
PL is the orbital angular momentum. So that is equal to LH by 2 pi. You may write it as LH cross as H cross C can be written as H by 2 pi where H is the Planck's const constant and L is the uh, L is also one quantum number representing the orbital angular momentum in uh, particular directions. So this is uh, the orbital angular momentum. Okay, so in, in terms of orbital uh, quantum number, orbital quantum number, LH cross, this is also must be an integer value. The value of L must be an integer. It could be from 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. So, uh, here, here as the uh, angle, angle of the direction or orientation of the orbit, in this direction uh, that that means it is perpendicular to the direction of magnetic field so the orientation of orbit can be in this direction also that means angle of orbit orientation is changing it could change in like this but in particular number but particular orientations are only allowed according to Sommerfeld concept that is also included in the vector atom model. So according to the concept of space quantization, PL can take only such orientations in space for which uh, its component in the field direction B will take integral values of H cross as we discussed in the earlier slide. So for the uh, magnetic moment, uh, orbital angular momentum, we can identify uh, PL cos theta is, uh, is the uh, total angular momentum in particular direction. So this value uh, can be taken as the angular momentum in that particular direction. So this value must be equal to integral multiple of ML, uh, integral multiple of H cross. So we can take ML into H cross. So PL cos theta equal to ML H cross where ML is the orbital magnetic quantum number. Orbital magnetic quantum number. So, so one more quantum number is introduced to the vector atom model in order to explain the motion of electron in particular uh, elliptical orbit in particular direction. So here theta is the angle between PL and the field direction in space. So as the electron is revolving in particular orbit, so here PL is the uh, magnetic uh, uh, orbital angular momentum and uh, theta, theta is the angle between PL and uh, for example this is the PL, a particular electron revolving in particular orbit. So uh, angle, angle between uh, magnetic field direction and this PL, theta between the two vectors that is theta. So PL cos theta equal to ML H cross where H cross equal to H by 2 pi. Two pi. So we'll see what uh, what what are the ML uh, values of ML in the later slides. So the largest component of PL along the field direction is the LH cross. Okay, when ML equal to L, so this value is less than the magnitude of PL. Uh, which means that the vector PL cannot align in the direction of magnetic field. So the angle between PL and the Z axis, that means the direction of magnetic field can be found by the cos of angle between the two vectors of magnetic field direction and angular momentum direction. That means uh, cos theta 
as we have seen in the earlier slide that PL cos theta equal to ML H cross. We already know that in the earlier lecture we are seeing that PL angular momentum, orbital angular momentum PL is given as LH cross. So, if we take this PL term to the right side, we can write cos theta equal to ML H cross as PL is equal to LH cross here LH cross. So, if we cancel H cross H cross, cos theta can be given as ML by L. ML by L. So, as ML has to be an integer, as it is a quantum number, magnetic quantum number, and cos theta also ranges from minus 1 to 1, and the maximum value of cos, magnitude of maximum value of cos theta could be 1. So that the permitted values of ML ranges from plus L to minus L, plus L to minus L at the unit intervals. Thus, ML takes the values from L to minus L or minus L to L in, in the intervals of, uh, in the unit intervals. So that we can take uh, ML values from uh, like L, L minus 1, L minus 2, uh, etc. 1, 0, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus L minus 2, minus L minus 1, up to minus L. So, for example, if L is 4, if L value is 4, then the values of ML could be uh, minus 4, minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So, that means minus 4 to 4 in intervals of 1, integer 1. So, minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So, according to L values, we can identify the ML values also. <coughs> okay. So, here uh, ML means orbital magnetic quantum number. Okay, so it means that corresponding to each of the value L, there could be 2L plus 1 ML values, possible ML values. So, we are finding allowed orientations. Only these orientations are only possible for electron to revolve around the elliptical orbit. So, the, uh, these are the possible elliptical orbits, orbit directions. So, there could be uh, 2L plus 1 possible ML values. So, this the angular momentum vector PL can take 2L plus 1 discrete orientations. The uh, L is equal to 4. Then, there could be 2 into 4, 8 plus 9, 9 discrete orientations with respect to the reference field. So, according to Bohr's summer field theory, in the absence of external magnetic field, the energy of electron in its orbit is the same for all orientations of PL in space. Whatever the direction of orbital, so the total energy is same for all orientations of the electron. So, whatever the direction of orientation of the elliptical orbit, uh, the electron is taking place, the to uh, total energy value is same for uh, all directions. The energy of the electron in all directions is same. So, this observation uh, is calculated according to the Bohr's number field theory. So, however, when the reference field is applied, for example, if the magnetic field is applied in particular direction, z direction, the energy of the 
electron will depend on the relative orientation of PL orbital angular momentum with respect to the field direction. So if you apply it, if the magnetic field is very less attended to zero or very negligible, the energy of electron is same for all orientations of the orbit, but whenever we apply a limited uh, magnetic field, so then the energy values changes discreetly. A little change could be there uh, for energy values for, uh, of electron in different orientation, orientations based on the orientation that means angle between the uh, orbital, uh, orbital and uh, field direction. So the magnetic moment uh, changes, uh, orbital angular momentum changes, that means PL values changes. No, energy, uh, energy also changes. So now the electron motion is visualized as three-dimensional motion. So uh, if you follow uh, uh, these orientations, we can see that the electron motion is in the three dimension. Space quantization therefore requires three quantum numbers uh, that are n, l and ml. n is the principal quantum number, l is the orbital quantum number and ml is the uh, magnetic quantum number. So the energy of electron depends on these three quantum numbers. So if you want to find out the uh, energy of electron in particular uh, orbital in particular direction can be calculated by using only these three quantum numbers n, l and ml. So that is also based on the applied magnetic field. So in fact the discrete orientations of the electron orbit with respect to the reference magnetic field direction occur due to the interaction of uh, orbital magnetic uh, orbital magnetic moment of the electron and reference magnetic field. So these discrete orientations can occur due to uh, only due to the interaction of the orbital magnetic moment of the electron and the reference magnetic field. So due to presence of uh, interaction between these two, these uh, different discrete certain orientations are occurring. So since uh, then only you can say energy values also little uh, having little difference among them. That's why we are seeing the spectral lines, individual uh, uh, fine structure of spectral lines. So since an electron has negative charge, its orbital motion is equivalent to a tiny current group. We are seeing uh, here, we are seeing why the orbital magnetic moment is adding up. So, whenever electron is revolving in particular uh, orbital, so as the electron is having negative charge, as the electron is moving in the circular or elliptical orbit, it uh, makes up the current. Uh, it generates the current in the uh, this loop. It is also like a loop as the electron is revolving uh, around a certain orbit, it produces the current. So, its uh, orbital motion is equivalent to a tiny current loop which produces a mag magnetic field perpendicular to the plane of orbit. So, whenever uh, again, when we see the uh, current in the circular loop, it also produces the magnetic field perpendicular to the uh, circular orbit or elliptical orbit. So the direction of magnetic field produced due to this current uh, is uh, followed by left hand rule and is pointed uh, opposite to the direction of PL. So as uh, seen in the earlier, so if it is the direction of orbital angular momentum, the direction of magnetic field will be opposite to the direction of orbital angular momentum according to the left hand rule. 
So the magnetic field set up by the orbital electron is quite similar to the field around a bar magnet. So if we keep a bar magnet similar to that, uh, we can see the orbital uh, magnetic field. Uh, so it is characterized by magnetic dipole moment. The magnetic field produced due to the current loop, which, uh, which is due to the uh, revolution of electron around, around a certain orbit can be called uh, represented by magnetic dipole moment and it is equal to magnetic dipole momentum mu equal to current into area of the orbit current into area of the orbit so magnetic dipole moment and mu equal to current into uh, a current so that is due to the motion of electron and area of the orbit uh, revolved by the electron. So we can uh, evaluate this magnetic moment uh, so that magnetic momentum I into A. So this is the case when electron is revolving the velocity V charge of electron E. So if it is revolving in particular orbit like this, then magnetic momentum mu equal to. And again, current produced, current is equal to charge, charge per unit time, charge per unit time. So E by T, current I equal to E by T and the area of the orbit can be taken as pi r square. So E by T into pi r square. So orbital angular momentum. So for orbital angular momentum, we can take mu L. So orbital angular, orbital magnetic momentum, orbital magnetic momentum mu L equal to E by T into pi r square. Here R is the radius of the electron orbit and it is the time period of uh, electron to revolve in the certain, uh, orbit. And again here we know that velocity can be taken V equal to 2 pi r circumference of the orbit by T time period. Velocity of the electron we can be taken as 2 pi r by T. So here instead of uh, 1 by T from this equation 1 by T can be taken as V by 2 pi r. So instead of 1 by t in this equation we can substitute V by 2 pi r. So mu L equal to E pi square E pi r square here. So instead of 1 by t we are substituting V by 2 pi r. So after cancelling pi and 1 r so we can take E V R by 2 and again we know that orbital angular momentum P L equal to M V R mass into velocity into radius of orbit. So that here instead of V R, V R we can write P L by M, we can substitute the value of Vr equal to Pl by M. So here e, instead of e, Evr by 2, we are getting E instead of Vr, Pl by M, Pl here M, Pl by M. So E Pl by 2M. And we know that Pl is equal to LH cross. Pl equal to LH cross so that we are substituting the value of PL in terms of L. So that means LH cross E by 2M into LH cross. And again here E, e is the charge of electron, M is the mass of electron and H cross H by 2 pi where H is the Planck's constant. All these terms are constants. The variable is only L. So these constants we can take it as mu b, Bohr magnetan. 
So mu b can be taken as E h cross by 2m. So that is Bohr's magneton. So let us see in terms of that means orbital magnetic momentum mu l equal to mu b l. So we will see what is mu b. Mu b is the Bohr's magneton. So mu b is the Bohr's magneton E h cross by 2m. We can also calculated this value to be uh, 9.273 into 10 power minus 24 ampere meter square after substituting the value of mass of uh, charge of electron mass of electron and uh, Planck's constant value in h by 2 pi so we are getting this value and again Bohr magneton is the basic unit of atomic magnetic movements yeah, anywhere and again we can find the gyro magnetic ratio that is the ratio between an, um, orbital magnetic moment and orbital angular momentum so gyro magnetic ratio means it is the ratio between orbital magnetic momentum mu l and orbital angular momentum pl so mu l um, as in the earlier equation mu l equal to mu b l or this is the value of mu l e by 2m into lh cross let us see uh, for simplification mu l equal to e l h cross by 2m e L H cross by 2m whereas PL 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 we know that L H cross we can take uh, PL as L H cross so L H cross L H cross cancel so remaining value E by 2m here also is the constant that means charge of electron and m is the mass of electron so this entire value is also constant so this value is called gyro magnetic ratio that means the ratio between orbital magnetic momentum and orbital angular momentum it is also constant it is the uh, it is also represented as uh, ratio between charge of electron and mass of electron so for gyro magnetic ratio uh, we can write as g equal to g into e by 2m here in this case uh, g is called land splitting factor for orbital motion of electron the value of g land splitting factor can be taken as 1 for our orbital motion of electron as the electron is revolving around nucleus in certain orbit in certain orientation also so g value is 1 so uh, this is about the space quantization in which we discuss mostly orbital motion of electron and in the le next lecture we discuss spin motion of electron that means uh, rotation, rotational motion of the electron. Okay. Thank you all. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.